Welcome to this next video in the playlist on field theory. In this video, what we're going to talk about is perfect fields. Now, this video is really a continuation of the previous video in this playlist on field theory, entitled Separable Polynomials Over a Finite Field of Characteristic, uh, a Prime Natural Number. Okay, and you're really not going to be able to understand it unless you have watched that video. Okay, so I suggest that you watch that prior to watching this one. Okay, so, uh, we'll begin then with the definition of a perfect field. Okay, so, what then is the definition of a perfect field? Well, a perfect field is a field that obeys one of two criteria. So there are two criteria, but you only have to obey one of them. Okay, so it's an OR case. Okay, so a perfect field is a field that either has characteristic equal to zero, so either the characteristic of the field can be equal to zero, that's good enough for you to be given the title of a perfect field, and of course some of our favourite fields are of characteristic zero, the rational numbers, the real numbers, the complex numbers, these are some very, very famous, very, very beautiful fields, and they all have characteristic equal to zero, so they are all given this title of being a perfect field. Excellent. Okay, the other criterion that you can obey is that the characteristic is not equal to zero, instead it's equal to a prime natural number, okay, but then if, um, if you have characteristic equal to a prime natural number, you have to obey something in addition, okay, and, so I'll put and, if you consider the Frobenius endomorphism, which acts on this field of characteristic a prime natural number, and then it has to be the case that this is bijective, so the Frobenius endomorphism acting on this field of characteristic uh, a prime number must be bijective if this field of characteristic a prime is to be considered a perfect field. So we're slightly more fussy with fields of characteristic P. They have to, in addition, obey this criterion. If you're characteristic zero, you get into this elitist club instantly. Whereas if you're characteristic equal to a prime, then you also have to jump through another hoop. You have to jump through the hoop that um, the Frobenius endomorphism acting on you is a bijective map, and we've seen examples of fields of characteristic a prime natural number which do indeed have a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. In particular, the uh, fields that are finite and have characteristic equal to a prime number, those uh, have a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. We know that the Frobenius endomorphism acting on a um, field is always going to be injective, so it just becomes a case of proving that this is subjective, and if it's a finite field, then of course it's going to be subjective if it's injective. Okay, so um, if you've got a finite field of characteristic P, that does satisfy that condition, so that's going to be in the club of perfect fields. And that's it, that's the definition of a perfect field. You either obey this or you obey this, of course you don't obey both of them, because you're not simultaneously characteristic zero and characteristic a prime natural number. Okay, so, uh, what I want to do now is actually motivate this, why have I defined this, or why well, I didn't come up with it, why has someone long, long ago come up with this definition? Well, of course, it has to do with the fact that fields that are perfect, fields that obey one of these two criteria, are going to have... Um, a beautiful theorems telling us exactly which polynomials in the ring of polynomials over these perfect fields are actually separable and which are inseparable. So in the ring of polynomials over a perfect field you can characterize beautifully which polynomials are going to be separable and which are going to be inseparable. Okay, so we know that if you've got a field of characteristic zero, then theorem one and theorem two, as we called them in the video on separable polynomials over a field of characteristic zero, and indeed in the video on separable polynomials over a finite field of characteristic prime natural number, uh, are going to be true. And remember, theorem one, so just to remind you of what theorem one said, so theorem one was that if a polynomial is irreducible in the ring of polynomials over uh, a field of characteristic zero, then it would be um, all separable. Okay, so it would also be separable. So irreducible implied separable. Indeed, all of the irreducible polynomials were separable. Okay, and we showed in the video on separable polynomials over a field of characteristic zero that indeed it is true. All irreducible polynomials in the ring of polynomials over a 
field of characteristic 0 are indeed separable. So theorem 1 holds true, and I'll just put that circle in orange here. Okay, right. Now, where once theorem 1 is true, we have shown then uh, in the video on fields of characteristic 0 that theorem 2 instantly follows. So I have theorem 2 here also coloured in, in orange. And theorem 2 is stronger. Theorem 2 tells us exactly the condition for a polynomial to be separable. So a polynomial is separable. Firstly, of course, we're assuming it's a non-constant polynomial. If and only if, so a double-headed arrow here, if and only if it's irreducible factorization in the ring of polynomials over the field, okay, consists of all distinct irreducibles, so f1 of x times f2 of x all the way up to fk of x, all of these irreducibles here in the irreducible factorization must be distinct. And of course that theorem 2 completely characterizes which polynomials in the ring of polynomials over this field of characteristic 0 are separable and which are not. Okay? You completely ignore all the constant polynomials. For all of the non-constant polynomials, you can call them separable or inseparable. It will be separable if its irreducible factorization in the ring of polynomials over that field of characteristic 0 consists of all distinct irreducibles. And if not, it will be inseparable. OK, so that is a beautiful theorem that then completely characterizes separable and inseparable polynomials in a ring of, um, in a ring of polynomials over a field of characteristic 0. Okay, so char characteristic zero fields have a beautifully characterized uh, set of separable polynomials in their rings of polynomials. And it's the same if you are a field of characteristic equal to a prime natural number and you have a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. Okay, so in the previous video in this playlist on separable polynomials over a finite field of characteristic P, we showed that theorem 1 and theorem 2 hold in a finite field of characteristic P. However, you can slightly generalize the condition, you can weaken the condition, because remember, if I just bring back up the piece of paper that we have from the previous video, the condition that we actually needed in order to conclude theorem 1 was that the derivative of this irreducible polynomial was not equal to zero, provided that that was true we could conclude that the polynomial and its derivative were relatively prime and therefore that the polynomial was inseparable. Now how were we able to conclude that if the polynomial was irreducible then its derivative was not equal to zero? Well remember we gave this clever argument in which we took the polynomial which we were supposing had derivative of 0, and we were trying to arrive at a contradiction here. So we said that if it had derivative of 0 in this field of characteristic uh, P, then that would mean that all of the non-zero coefficients in front of powers of x were in front of powers of x that uh, had indexes multiples of P, okay? And then what we did is we said, okay, because we're working in a finite field of characteristic P, the Frobenius endomorphism will be bijective, and we can write all of these coefficients as some other elements of the field to the power of P. And that was the central bit in this whole cascade that then allowed us to prove that this polynomial was not irreducible, and therefore it was a contradiction because uh, we assume the polynomial was irreducible. Hence, if the polynomial was irreducible, its derivative could not be equal to zero. Okay, but all that argument relied on was that the Frobenius endomorphism was bijective and therefore the inverses to the Frobenius endomorphism existed. Okay, so for any element of the field there existed another element of the field such that if you raised it to the power of p you would get that original element of the field. That's all we needed. So all we needed was a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. We didn't need the field of characteristic P to be finite. Okay, it was just that that was an easy way of getting a field of characteristic P that uh, had a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. But we're now generalizing and we're now saying all we actually need is a field of characteristic P with a bijective Frobenius endomorphism. And if that is the case, you can prove that all irreducible polynomials are in fact separable polynomials. And once theorem 1 is true, all you need then is theorem 1 to show theorem 2. So theorem 2 will also follow. So in these fields too, uh, or rather in rings of polynomials over these fields, you will have a very nicely characterized set of separable polynomials. So you'll be able to easily characterize the set of separable polynomials. Okay, so
Uh, that, then, is why we make this definition of a perfect field like this. Perfect fields are those fields such that if you look at the ring of polynomials over those fields, theorem 1 and theorem 2 hold true. Uh, you can beautifully characterize which polynomials in those rings of polynomials over a perfect field are separable and which are not. Okay, so where are we going to go further with this video? Because we've now seen the definition of perfect fields. What am I going to talk about now? What I'm going to mention now is what about non-perfect fields, because not all fields are perfect fields. So now let's just talk about non-perfect fields and get a little bit more intuition about non-perfect fields. So we're now talking about a non-perfect field. Now of course a non-perfect field, the first thing I can say about a non-perfect field is that its characteristic must be equal to a prime. So if I take the characteristic of my non-perfect field, it must be equal to a prime, because if it was characteristic zero, it would instantly qualify to be in the perfect fields. Okay, so it must have characteristic equal to a prime, and also the Frobenius endomorphism must not be bijective. So its Frobenius endomorphism will be injective, but not subjective. Okay, so in particular, it won't be a finite uh, field of characteristic equal to a prime, it will be an infinite field. Okay, right. Now, the difficulty here is that because we do not have a bijective Frobenius endomorphism, we cannot prove theorem 1, and indeed theorem 1 is not going to be true in these non-perfect fields, i.e. it is not true to say that if you have a polynomial P of X, let's say, in the ring of polynomials over my non-perfect field now, that if it's irreducible, it is necessarily separable. You cannot conclude that. There are irreducible polynomials in the ring of polynomials over a non-perfect field that will not be separable, that will be inseparable. And the reason is that now it is possible to have an irreducible polynomial such that the derivative of this is equal to zero. Okay? Remember, we required the fact that the Frobenius endomorphism was bijective to prove that if you had an irreducible polynomial, the derivative of that was not equal to zero in the more in this context here. Okay, we don't have that anymore, and therefore it's no longer true. Some polynomials that are irreducible will have a derivative that is equal to zero. Of course, not all of them will. There'll be loads of irreducible polynomials in this ring of polynomials over this non-perfect field that have derivatives that are non-zero, but some of them will have derivatives that are equal to zero. And for those ones, the polynomial P of X and its derivative will no longer be relatively prime, and therefore P of X will not be separable, it will be inseparable. But let me just stress that for all the polynomials in here that are irreducible and which have derivatives that are non-zero, then the argument still works perfectly. For those polynomials, it's absolutely fine. You can instantly conclude that that polynomial is separable. Okay, uh, that's fine. Provided the derivative is non-zero, of course, then, uh, the polynomial and its derivative are not going to have a common divisor that is not a unit, because any common divisor that wasn't a unit would have to be an associate of P of X, and the derivative always has degrees strictly less uh, than the uh, degree of the original polynomial, which is the degree of the associate. Okay, so provided the derivative is not equal to zero, it's absolutely fine for you to conclude that this irreducible polynomial is separable. However, for some of them, it will be the case that the derivative is equal to zero, and then you can't conclude it, because zero is not relatively prime to P of X, because zero is a multiple of anything. So this polynomial will end up being inseparable. So this general theorem doesn't work anymore. It's not true to say that all the irreducible polynomials in the ring of polynomials over this non-perfect field are going to be uh, separable. Okay? So what can we do? Do we just give in now? We Theorem 1 isn't true anymore, so Theorem 2 is not going to be true anymore. What can we do? Well, we can do something, okay? We can go a little bit further. What I'm going to show you in the next video is that for one of these polynomials, P of X, that is irreducible and which has derivative equal to zero and therefore is inseparable, okay? So for these, in, these particular irreducible polynomials in this ring of polynomials over this uh, non-perfect field that are inseparable because they're derivative is equal to zero,
we can always manipulate them a little bit, alter them a little bit, to find a polynomial that is very much so related to them, but which will have a non-zero derivative, will still be irreducible, and therefore will be separable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these inseparable, irreducible polynomials which have zero derivative and modify them to find a related polynomial which is uh, separable because it has a non-zero derivative and is still irreducible. Okay, so we'll do that in the next video.